Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to show how I made this boring bar. It's custom made. I'm uh, in the middle of the project that calls for internal thread cutting and I needed the bar for doing it. I for unfortunately don't have a carbide ended boring bar. They are fairly cheap but I never did bought it and uh, I don't know, never, it was never a time, but nevertheless I need to do, go forward with the project I'm, that I'm doing, I'm going to show in some later videos. I needed to make this kind of a boring bar, it's not anything special, I need, it's fa fairly short, as all of you know the rigidity is the main issue with boring bars. So. There is absolutely no need to make it longer than it needs to be. For this special job, it's going to be used for depth of cut 20-25 millimeters maximum. I have around 40. Here it's, it is going to use high speed steel bits, round 6 millimeter in diameter, and uh, it's made in this manner. So it is slitted in the middle. We have the hole for 6 mm bit. We have this hole that helps flexing it for the screw that tightens the bit in here. And uh, one interesting thing about this is that I made a hole from the other side also for the set screw where you can use the, the hole that you can use. You can use it as a external threading but most important thing is that this boring bar acts like a holder for grinding round bits for the lathe so I'm going to show it how it's done so first let's prepare the stock So we are now in the process of making our special boring bar for the internal thread that I need. So it is an opportunity to show a trick how to hold square stock in a three-jaw chuck. I believe most of the people know that, are familiar, but nevertheless, when we are here, we can talk a little about it. So the trick is in the bushing. We make this bushing so that our square stock fits inside tightly, relatively tight, but it can be made. And then I've cut this along the axis and so that the bushing can be squeezed when the jaws from the chuck are going to be tightened. So internal diameter is approximately around the value of the diagonal in the this square, so you can calculate this, there is no point for me to now talk about mathematical formulas, basic ones at least, I'm not some of the mathematician, but it should be fairly simple, it's a elementary school mathematics. So we put this in, and this is the way if you don't have forja chuck or you just are lazy to put it on a lathe like I am now. You can make this, this kind of bushing and you can tighten your square stock and it will run. It will not be perfectly true, but it will run reasonably true. So you can turn the ends of it. First of all, of course, we are going to put this in and face the end of our square bar. It's a, I didn't mention it, it's a cold rolled, actually called a drone, still unknown exact type, but for the purpose that I'm going to use it, it actually doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe it would be best to do it from drill rod or silver steel, but it is what it is, it is what I have, and we, I'm going to use this. 
first I'm going to face the end on both sides so let's do it bear in mind that you don't have to tighten this so that you deform totally your bushing but front feet is your friend so let's face the part safety glasses of course are the must must since it's a interrupted cut let's not get wild with the speed 200 rpm should be enough I don't know maybe I'll increase it Now surface finish is at this moment irrelevant for this. We could be now playing with automatic feed and everything else, but looks okay. Take the part out, rotate it in the chuck. Let's do the other one. Now, while we are at it, we can make this is going to be our back side. We can now make our center bore, center drill it. millimeter round high speed steel so this hole needs to be six mil 15 millimeters deep First hole, first position in our internal threading boring bar. Now you can see when I'm pulling it out, you can see now when we have our hole through the center, how through it runs after I released it from the chuck and put it back in. It runs fairly true. I'm actually very pleased. No need for the four jaw chuck. Here I'm going to take 10 millimeters. It will be very clear later when we are going to use it for grinding the bit why I did it. Taking half a millimeter cuts just as a precaution, after all, it is 
to wrap the stock, but you should be fine. Now we are going to need to make a final pass just for the diameter here is not critical but just as a reference we have 14 millimeters maybe just a little chamfer on the end also not necessary but when we are here let's do it taking out our stock this is going to be this is going to be the working the business end of our boring bar I didn't mention it before when you use this bushing it, could, it is good practice not to get your corner not to get the corner inside your slit Slo just maybe like this in the middle and clamping it is good that those two corners are in alignment by eye not need to be precise but maybe approximately in the line of your jaws you'll get the firmer grip and it will run nicer so as I said this is going to be our business end of the boring bar and we are going to turn it to be round I have 35 millimeters sticking it out. It should be plenty for what I need to do. Again, taking half a millimeter per pass and hand feeding. Okay, and that concludes the job that is going to be done on a lathe. Rest of it I'm going to do on a milling machine. This is the part our future our future boring bar that I'm going to use for threading. Next operations can be done easily only with uh, drilling with a drill press and uh, maybe even with a hand drill and hand saw but since I do have the mill it's not something fancy it's a very 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 cheap very simple mill with round column I'm going to do it on a mill but for those of you that do not have access to the mill, it can be done actually with uh, only, like I said, with a drill press and hacksaw. So let's do it. Here we are on the mill. We need to drill a few holes. As all of you remember, 
I did drill six millimeter hole in here. I'm going to try to keep this fairly simple. I, everything here can be done in a drill press, but since I have a mill, I'm going to use it. First of all, all of the jobs that we are going to perform here now are going to be along the same Y axis. So we are going to establish it in this way. I repeat, this is not maximum precision, but it is enough for the kind of work that we are going to do. Now I'm going to put my six millimeter drill inside the hole and now and then establish my value of the y axis good enough and now I'm locking it because this this travel we are not going to use we are going to use the travel along X axis first thing we need to do is to drill the hole for the cutting bit now we are practically on the center we are going to drill it as close as possible end of the bar so that the thread we are going to cut we can come as near as possible to the end of the hole. To take the hole through must remove a parallels So this is our first hole. Now we need another hole that must be perpendicular to this one. This is the hole. It wandered a little of the center, but it doesn't actually matter. Now we need to drill another hole in here that will allow, after the bar is slitted here, that will allow deflection and with a screw that will enable the screw that will tighten this together. So let's do it. That's it. This is our part. Next thing that we need to do is drill a hole for the screw that is going to be hole for the screw is going to be perpendicular to this hole and it will be around halfway between those two so let's do it.
Now we've slotted our bar. Next thing we need, we need to cut the thread. This is going to be M5 in here. But first, I'm going to take it out and off camera take some burrs out of this. I've forgotten to drill hole for the set screw here. So let's do it now. After all, I'm doing all this from my head. I didn't make drawings or anything, so it doesn't matter. 4.2 millimeters for uh, M5 thread. Now I'm going to drill, open this hole in, with 5.5 millimeter drill to ensure passage for the screw. I'm going to drill only upper part because lower part is going to have M5 thread. So only upper half is going to be drilled with 5.5. Drilling here the place for the screw cap head, whatever you want to call it. To call it, it is going to be like this. Now I need to widen this hole to have some space for the head. The head is around eight millimeters, eight and a something. So I think eight and a half should be fine. I happen to have 9mm milling cutter. For this purpose I'm just going to... I know that it should not be done like this, but since I'm lazy I'm going to try to do it this way. If it won't go then we are going to take it out and put it in a collet. Slower speed. And let's try. I'm doing it by eye. I'm just going to measure it. It's okay. Next thing of operation is to cut the thread in here and in here for the set screws, both M5. Here we are at the grinder. Now I'm going to ground this bit that I've cut approximately 20 millimeters long and first I'm going to let me bring you closer I'm going to ground a little flat here flat surface that is going to be used for this set screw to ground it always in the same place so that the same bit can be reground when needed without much effort and without much fiddling and now as you've noticed, it now acts like it is the square piece of high-speed steel. All the rules that you use for grinding square bits can now be applied. So first let's make this little flat. We can do it like this, we can do it like this, or like this. Doesn't matter. Just slightly. So let's do it. This is the flat surface. Now unscrewing it and going backwards. Next thing we need to do is to take half of the round off so that we can grind our profile. Now 
now we've made this flat surface approximately now if you want to have a positive rake just grind it a little like this ground approximate profile it's time for the fish tail I use the fish tail to check my angles believe it or not but I've actually made it in the first attempt but let's refine it a little. It looks like I'm almost there. This is the profile that we are having. If you need to go close to the shoulder, just foresee that when you are grinding you can make this side or this side shorter. The shorter it gets you can go closer. Basically the tip is going to be moved more in this way or in this way. However you prefer. This is approximately in the middle but for the job that I'm going to do I'm going to move it a little bit that way to the left that means that I have to take more of this side Next thing is just to hone edges that I'll do off camera but now it's nice on the camera can be I think you can see the profile that I've had maybe break a little this edge and this is it also something that may be useful is that you can use this bar as a holder if you have mating threads you can cut like this on a lathe you can cut external thread and then put it the same bit in a, this side and then cut internal thread and they should be perfectly matched just because uh, it is going to be cut with the same bit with the same geometry so it may, may be easier to mate two threads. This concludes today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll be showing the tool in action in some of my next videos as a part of a bigger project. Once again, thank you for watching. See you next time.